My, my name is Anurag, and uh, I'm going to speak about uh, writing flexible file systems with Qs Python. Uh, just a small survey before I start. Uh, how many of us here are file system engineers? Okay, one. Okay, so if I uh, say anything wrong or anything, just correct me there, okay? I, that'll be fine. So I'm a Python beginner, and uh, I wanted to do know uh, how the OS works, how the file system works. This, is a, this was a, uh, a month-long project uh, to understand the file system and uh, uh, see how to uh, make a working file system. So there was this uh, amazing library called Fuse, which allows you to uh, write your own file systems in a high-level language. Uh, Python was a language choice because Python is good. So this slide is also available at uh, this URL. If you are following in the laptop, just uh, open this in the browser. So you can uh, follow along at your own pace. OK, so talk overview. What I will, uh, I've segregated the talk into four or five parts. Uh, one is the Unix-based file systems. We'll see what file systems are, how, how they, are, uh, they work, OK? Uh, what are the basic components of a file system? What are the attributes that you need to define? Uh, next is, uh, what is Fuse? So given the file system which you already have in the OSs, where does Fuse fit in? Okay, why would you use Fuse? Uh, then Fuse API overview. We'll see what are the basic functions that you need to implement, what's the class that you need to subclass, and uh, how to get a basic file system which displays a directory going. Uh, then there's a small demo about toy FS. It's a toy file system just to learn. So uh, there are two, uh, there's a controller in it, and there are two modules. Uh, one creates a file system with directories, and there's another module which creates a file system with directories and files which you can read and uh, display some output on the screen. Okay? It's a very small toy file system just to learn. Okay? Uh, next will be question and answer in the end. Uh, this is uh, uh, a very uh, interesting comment by uh, Professor Joseph Pfeiffer from uh, New Mexico State University. Uh, he, uh, this, is, this is very true, right? Uh, one of the real contributions of the Unix operating system was the idea that everything is a file. You look at everything as a file. So for example, a keyboard or your uh, USB drive or your display, uh, everything is, is a file. Okay. So you read something from a file and you write something in a file. So it could be your printer or your uh, hard disk or uh, uh, anything. So what are the common file systems which uh, we already have? Uh, VFAT is there for Windows, uh, HFS Plus, OS X. Uh, you have ext4 on Linux, you have XFS. So uh, there's NFS and Fuse, which is mentioned uh, with an asterisk. So th these are not on-disk file systems. These are, you can say, they're virtual file system. They are based on a uh, on-disk file system. They are based on top of it, and they provide extra extra functionalities. So uh, NFS, for example, is a network file system. Okay, uh, Fuse uh, is a very peculiar file system which allows you to make uh, very uh, interesting file system. For example, you can make a file system which reads into a zip file and shows the contents in a directory format, which a normal application, which a normal file explorer can view. Uh, if, if you do this cat proc file systems, it will tell you which file systems, is, uh, which file systems are currently uh, supported by your kernel. Okay, okay so it, uh, it supports, uh, among other file systems, it supports ext 3 ext 2 ext 4 so the kernel is compiled for XFS also, but I don't see it here. So you can simply load it via mod probe. Okay, that will load it. When you do uh, cat proc file systems again, uh, you'll see XFS over there. So this way you can load new file systems which are compiled with the kernel. And now uh, this is I'm, I'm sure many many of you are familiar with this. This these are the file system uh, file system type attributes. So when you do a directory listing in a long mode L, the first character that you see signifies what type of file it is. So if it's a D, it's a directory. Uh, or if anything else, it's a, it's a file. So directory is a special file which contains files, including directories, right? So Fuse, uh, Fuse, the, uh, the full form is file system in user space. So F comes from there, and then UAC comes from there. Uh, so this is the how the virtual memory is segregated. Um, 
So the first box that you see over there is the user mode, and uh, the second box is the kernel mode. So user mode means all the applications that are running in, uh, in, in the, with the user's permission. Okay. So things like your uh, daemons, okay, uh, or the window system, or the uh, browser or editor which is running on top of the window system, or any other libraries, they, they all run on the user space. Okay. They run with your uh, unprivileged user's uh, permissions. So they all talk to the glibc API, which provides you a set of maybe about 2,000 uh, function calls. Uh, so they all talk via the glibc standard C API, and which in turn connects to the uh, system calls provided by the kernel, and uh, gives you the uh, ability to access the underlying process scheduling or the inter-process communication or the virtual file system. In, in this case, uh, that's something which you're going to see, or the network. So this way, the memory is segregated. So you cannot directly access anything, uh, memory management or virtual file system directly. You need to go via the kernel system calls. So uh, what Fuse does is, uh, it, it, it's usable by unprivileged users. What that means is, uh, as, a, as a normal user, you can create a program which uses the Fuse library and make it behave the way you want. So for example, I, I, I mentioned the zip file system. So you can make something like uh, a git file system. Okay? So you can write a program in, in Python or any other language which does a, a git show ref or a git ls. And the output that you get, it translates that into a directory listing. Okay? We'll see that into a directory listing, which is passed on to the kernel virtual file system, which goes back via the kernel system calls to the glibc API and goes back to the ls command. So when ls runs, it requests the virtual file system for the listing of the directory where it is in, okay, or the parameter. So this travels all the way back from the kernel back to the application which is running in the user space, which responds with git ls or git show ref or whatever you want, right? So it's usable by the unprivileged users. Uh, so th the most important point here is uh, the development cycle is slower because uh, it, it's a user mode program, right? You don't have to compile, recompile the kernel and uh, add a support for XFS or any other uh, uh, latest leading edge file system. It's easy to install. Uh, for example, SSHFS is another interesting file system. Uh, can simply be installed via apt-get install or yum install SSHFS. What this does is, is uh, it, it using your uh, username and password, SSH username and password. You can connect to a remote server and uh, it gets a listing and transfers back. So you don't need NFS or anything. Simply an SSH connection to the remote server can get you a usable file system in your local machine. Okay? Uh, multiple language bindings. Uh, we're going to see Python here. And it's been ported to other operating systems as well. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. Uh, how the calls go via the VFS back to the application. So on, on the top box, you have your program running ls hyphen l and uh, a directory where your Fuse file system is mounted. Okay, uh, then that, that's the user space. So whenever you say ls, you want to know the directory contents of that directory, uh, TMP fuse, or whatever the mount point is. So it, the control goes back to glibc API. Uh, glibc API translates back to the VFS via the kernel system calls. And uh, VFS knows that this directory, TMP fuse, is mounted over fuse. Okay? Or some other directory, mnt slash nfs, could be mounted over nfs or ext3, whatever it is. The VFS knows that. So it goes to Fuse, and it transmits, uh, transmits uh, back up to the libfuse and back to the program which is running. So dot slash hello is the program, and it's mounted over TMP Fuse. So uh, the control goes here, TMP Fuse, and it goes back to the hello program. And hello program will do whatever it wants to do, right? If it's a zip FS, SHFS, it will take action on the parameter, TMP Fuse, and it'll give the listing back. It'll come back to the program LS. Then LS will display the contents, OK? So that's the diagram. We'll see how it works uh, actually on a, a working simple file system, right? I'll set up two terminals. One is where uh, I will mount the file system. And the second one, I'll show the, the logs. Right. Uh, ls slash tmp. It's empty. So we want to make a directory called TMP slash fuse, where we'll mount the fuse file system. Okay? This is an empty directory because it's just an ordinary directory. 
now we will go to the toyfs uh, file system. Here you have a, a main controller toy, toyfs.py. We will see that what was inside it in the later slide. So to mount a file system, you simply have to do python toyfs.py and the mount point. Okay. I uh, will open the log here. A new log file has been created. Okay, it's empty because we have not done any operation on that directory. Now, when you see lstmp fuse, you'll see it's no longer empty. So it contains some two directories, right? Hello and world. And on the log, you'll see uh, the program is emitting uh, get attr read dir on slash. So for the mounted file system, a program called ls somehow wants to know what's inside slash. So it responds with some some uh, directory listing. It's a, it's a dictionary, and then you get get attr on hello and get attr on world. So uh, the direct uh, the directory contents is hello and world, and it needs to know what kind of direct, what kind of file it is. It is a directory or what permissions are there. So because of which two get attr extra are fired over there, right? Now let's see what's inside hello. Okay. There is another directory called weld. Now notice here, the get ATR, uh, get ATR command has changed, and now you'll see uh, read dir hello and hello world. So it's getting contents from uh, fuse hello weld. So same way you can go recursing into a directory and get the directory contents. Okay, I'll unmount this directory for now. So how do I install Fuse? Uh, you need to install Fuse-Python or if it's Ubuntu or Debian, Python-Fuse. Uh, loading Fuse, uh, same way, mod probe, that will load the kernel module. The way we did for XFS, you can simply do sudo mod fuse and uh, That should show the kernel module loaded. Okay, so the first thing you need to do to implement a fuse file system in Python is uh, create a subclass of fuse dot fuse class, and implement a number of methods. Okay, so we saw in the log there were two function uh, two methods call. Uh, one is uh, get attr, and one is read dir. Okay, we'll see what that is. So as I mentioned, uh, this file system contains two uh, two major components. One is the toyfs.py, that's the controller, and uh, the actual implementation is inside toy.py or toyreadwrite.py. Okay. So this is a glue code which can uh, simply uh, follow along. Uh, you have to import fuse time if you want to use it. I just imported. Uh, set up logging. Toyfs.log is where all the log is being printed. Uh, then you have to uh, subclass this. Fuse or fuse class. Okay, uh, I've imported toy as toy because I want to change this on the fly, make it toy read write as toy, so that the rest of the code doesn't change. Okay, uh, then you have to implement these two methods. Okay, get attr is getting the attributes of the files, and read dir is reading the directory contents. Okay, these are two basic functions that you need to implement to get a working file system. So what I'm doing here is uh, get it here. Uh, it's printing a log message and uh, it's getting the stat, okay, stat uh, object from fs. So fs is over here. We'll see next what uh, what fs does, and uh, it calls the fs dot get it here. It's, it's a mirror function. This does the same thing over there, and the actual implementation is inside uh, the fs dot get it here function. Okay, I will implement two more functions. Uh, we'll see that later. And in the end, you have to. Uh, this is for printing the uh, when you when you give the Python and toyfs.py command without any mount point, then it prints uh, the help message. Okay. Uh, in the end, you have to set all these attributes and say toyfs.main. That will mount the file system. Okay. Uh, and this, when you say Python and then uh, program name and mount point, it will the program will quit. And then uh, later on, when you want to unmount it, you can say f user. 
mount and then minus u. Uh, that will unmount the file system. Uh, yeah, we covered this. Uh, to mount file system, we have to instantiate the file system class and just call the main, what we called in the end. Uh, yeah, this is how you mount it, Python, Python, and then program name, which implements all this, and then a mount point, okay? TMP slash fuse or toy, whatever it is. Now, get it here, uh, this function, uh, defining this is mandatory. So without this, a file system will not work, okay? Because uh, a file contains many attributes, right? Uh, it, uh, the file system, uh, file type, uh, what permissions are there, who is the owner, okay? Uh, and uh, what's the timestamp, create time, all this is mandatory. So you need to implement this for a working file system. A stat structure, um, so these are the, uh, these are the various uh, attributes that you need to set. So over here, uh, you'll see that uh, this is a mirror function. When you call get ATTR, it will m make an object of uh, toy stat. So toy stat contains these attributes. So st mode, mode means uh, uh, the, the permission, the, it's combination of the permissions and the file type, okay, uh, inode number, rest of it is mandatory. You need to set the user ID, GID. Uh, for this uh, this particular system, I have set as 500. You can set any user ID, GID you want, or you can uh, set this permission inside your file and then retrieve it and then set it. Okay, this is static for this case. Uh, ST size you need to set what size the file is. Okay, and then the access time, modified time, creation time. Okay, so these are just uh, the explanation for all those bits. Uh, how, how do you view the stat of a file, okay? Uh, we have run this command stat. Okay, uh, when you do stat on a file, it will tell you everything about that file. So permission bits, okay, size, okay, file name or access time, everything. So all this comes from the uh, st underscore stat uh, member. Uh, how the uh, mode actually works. Uh, so uh, in, in stat module, uh, if you see the uh, uh, documentation, uh, Python stat module, so there are, there are uh, uh, the variables s underscore if dir, and then you bitwise or it with the permissions. Uh, 755 is the permission that I want to give to this file, and uh, do a bitwise or and set it to st mode. So that will set the file, file, file type and uh, the permission bits. Uh, ST mode can take uh, these parameters. You, uh, if, it, if you want to create a directory, then you can simply say if dir or link or anything else and bitwise or with the permission that you want. Uh, this, this explanation is there in the Python stat module. And simply open this uh, link. Okay. Our next uh, important function is read dir. These two functions are required. Read dir will give you the directory contents. Okay. First, you need to get the permissions of a file and then the directory contents to be able to display the contents of a directory. Okay, so in, in this case, I've made a very simple function, uh, read dir and the path. So the uh, hello and world uh, directories that you saw earlier, it's coming from here. So there is a content dictionary and if you query for a slash, Okay, when you do a ls on the TMP fuse, it's querying for slash. So you get this, this as the uh, uh, response, hello and world. Or if you query for slash hello, you get welt. Okay, so that's where it's coming from. And then you need to add this to dot and dot dot, which is the current and previous directories, combine it and return back. Okay, that's the directory contents. So you can, uh, this is a very simple file system which in which the directory contain is inside a, 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 it's a dictionary, right? Dictionary, or you can modify this. You can make it a SH file system or HTTP file system where you can do this lookup part and make a, let's say, a call to an FTP server, get the directory listing from there, and then 
append with dot and dot dot and return that. You can do all kind of fancy stuff over there. Uh, reading files, if you want to read files, uh, so the first two function get ATDR and read is for simply getting a directory listing and the get, uh, getting the directory tree. If you want to actually read files, you need to implement additional functions open and read. Okay. Uh, I'll just uh, demonstrate a small uh, modification to the toy.py uh, file system implementation. So I've made a uh, another program so in this case uh, what I'm doing is first look at the get, uh, read DIR so in slash uh, I'm adding a couple of more directories and files so in, if you notice there is a docs directory so in docs uh, it's returning a file or, or whatever this is a string called a readme.txt okay so when you do a listing on slash docs it will return readme.txt as a content uh, now in the get ATTR, I've just modified it. If the path ends with .txt, then set the ST mode as a regular file. Okay, or if it's a directory, or if it's anything else, then set it as a DIR with the permissions bitwise odd. Okay, and then return ST. So what happens is whenever I, I go and do a listing on a directory which contains a .txt file, it will set the permission mode as a regular file bitwise odd with the permissions. That's a small modification. And in uh, there's a read method. If you do a read on a file, it has to be file. It can't be directly on a file. It will return self dot data. Self dot data is there in init. Uh, it, this is lorem ipsum string. Okay. So what should happen is when I go to uh, the directory mount this again, and I go to doc, docs directory, I'll get readme.txt as a listing. And when I try to read it, I'll get that string. Uh, it can be binary, so it doesn't matter for this. So you, you need to write a program which can transfer binary files to the uh, underlying LS program. So in this case, I've just defined a string. I could make it binary and make sure the function parameter calls and everything handles binary. Yeah, so I'll import, instead of toy, I import toy read write dot, uh, read, write, uh, read write as toy, so that I don't have to change anything else. Uh, uh, just notice it. What, uh, so what, what function calls are being uh, executed? Okay, if I go to docs, I have a read or txt. Okay, so the if condition over there, it tells that if, whenever you see a, a string which ends with txt, set the mode as uh, if reg. So when I try to cat it, okay, uh, I get the lower emission string back. So the condition, what uh, what is there is uh, whenever you try to read on an ordinary file, it should just retrieve uh, cell dot data and return it back. Okay. So if I create any other readme or txt file over there, it will return this thing because cell data remains the same. So to make uh, add more features of file system, you can implement uh, rest of these functions. There are more. Uh, so you can. For implementing symbolic link, for example, you can have like a, a, a link and unlink function. Uh, you, for making anything, anything else like a, a character device or a block device, you can implement the mk not function. Uh, it takes the major and minor modes and the path. Uh, or the, for um, uh, managing the extended attributes, there are xattr functions available. So you can go through the documentation and uh, make your file system more featureful. So. There are some file systems out there uh, which are very popular. Uh, there is uh, uh, MySQL FS. So uh, it, it just queries your database, right? You write a program which queries your database and s saves all the files over there. Or there is uh, SSHFS, which is very, very popular. Uh, there is Gmail FS, which was uh, one of the uh, highlights of use back then. So what it did was uh, uh, it uses your username and password and logs into the IMAP server and uh, gets the list of labels and the emails and exposes the entire Gmail as a folder inside your file, in, in, in your computer. So you can simply do a CD to a directory and you see all the labels as folders. Uh, you see all the emails as files, right? So uh, it, it just depends on what, what program you can write, right? So it, it's in user space. Uh, you are free to write or modify your program and LS will simply pass the file 
uh, the the location to your program, and it's for you to implement how you want to implement. Uh, that's the end of the uh, the talk, and I'd like to take some questions. So when you mount other file system types, you can actually do it via mount by specifying the type by hyphen t option. So I believe it's some sort of alias. So how do I do it for this for any file system that I implement myself? So uh, I I remember doing this once. Uh, you put it inside your etcfs tab. And uh, you specify the mount point and the source. So I am sure documentation will have it. I've done it exactly once, so I don't recollect the exact thing. But you can put in etcfs tab, and you can make, make it uh, auto mount, and okay. it's automatically mounted. Mm -hmm. And so does uh, Fuse have support for asynchronous I/O, or some, is that something that the driver will have to implement in sort of? So like uh, since this API that was shown here was synchronous, completely synchronous. synchronous. Yes, so let's say if I want to implement an API that is asynchronous in nature. So does Linux have that sort of abstraction available that Fuse or something uh, else could use? It does, but I'm not sure if Python does. Uh, so mostly, uh, if you want to make like a, re a real world file system, you would use, you would really want to use a C, C driver, which would support all this. Uh, sorry? It does. But uh, the Python driver has or not, I'm not very sure about it. So the, is the Python, it just calls the C, it's bindings to the C API. That's what it is, right? Yes. OK. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions? OK. Is there any limitation on the size of a file, of the volume that you mounted, or, or the partition table, or anything like that? So as far as I understand, with Fuse, uh, there's no concept of size limitation. right? It, it, it's, a, it's for your program to implement size limitation. There is, however, a limitation on the number of uh, uh, the, uh, I don't know what's called, block size or something, which yeah. you can read at a time. Yeah. So it's 32 KB or something. Uh, it's 8 KB, or you can pass the option for big big writes or uh, large reads, uh, which makes it 32 KB and larger size. Uh, so that's the limitation which is there in Fuse. Uh, other than that, volume size limitation, I doubt it depends on how you write your program in the back end, in, in the user space. Yeah, is it uh, what is the size like? Uh, if you can mount for, uh, for example, IOL, if I say otherwise, embedded kind of area, is it very? What is the size of this file system? Size of file system. This is fuse module, kernel module. Okay, means uh, uh, you know, like IDRAP or IOL, all those kind of things. They will have the very tiny OS. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, means I want to see the better usage of this one, yeah. like Raspberry or whatever. If somebody want to try out. Non need to go to the exact OS because I missed yeah. the first so 10 minute session. Yeah, the footprint. Uh, I don't have the figures for the footprint. Okay. But uh, uh, I'm sure the C library would be very small. Uh, there is Fuse, uh, Fuse module that you need to uh, install in the kernel. Uh, that would be a standard size, known size. But uh, I don't have the figures right now. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Uh, can you use the mic? Use NFS over the NFS partition of folders. Can we use Fuse? Uh, so uh, you want to mount an NFS file system yeah, over Fuse? Over NFS. Over, over NFS. NFS. So that the uh, the backend file system is actually an NFS file system. That I don't think that should be a problem. You need to uh, so probably uh, you need to implement an actual uh, file system reads over there. Maybe uh, I don't know the use case for it. Why would you do that? But Still, it, it's possible, right? Uh, you have a backend program, uh, maybe in C or Python, whatever it is, and you get a uh, read DIR, uh, get ATTR, and you do actual get ATTR on the file system and get it back. So NFS implements, I think, all the uh, it's it's POSIX compliant. So uh, Fuse would run simply. I don't see why there will be a problem. Uh, hello, uh, is there a process which is running, and what if that? So you said you did Python something, and then you had the mount point. Yes. Is there some kind of process which is? Yes. Let's see that. That's an interesting question. Okay. So uh, there's the Python command. Uh, 
uh, which takes file as parameter and uh, the bound point, right? So there you have it. What if I kill this and still try to access the mount point? Let's try that. <laughs> it's gone. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Let's head for lunch. Jokes then. So, uh, all guys fed up, uh, I mean, not fed up, as in, you've fed yourself up. Not fed up with the conference, that's not what I meant to say. I mean, you've, you've, you've had your food? People be willing. Okay. Hmm? Okay, so, um, how did you find the conference? Just good. It was better the last couple of years. Why do you feel so? Too basic. Do you think you have expanded and you've, you've raised your expectation? You've, you've learned a lot, lot over the few years, probably. Sort of expectation. Good, good. It's always been increasing, and this year it has been? It's a dip. Okay, that's a harsh thing to say. Still, um, I would. It's always a mixed reaction, you know. Not you. You, you have a support. Okay. So, um, w how do you think you can improve it? Would you like to share experience? No. Would you like to share some share some of yours and may maybe share how would you like to you you would like to improve it upon it? Okay. That's excellent. That's excellent. So. Um, is there anyone who would like to share an experience right here? I mean, about anything, about PyCon, about your experience using Python, something because, well, you've got this room, nothing's going on, and uh, approximately for next 45 minutes. People, something? Chamyadeep, got something to say? No. OK. So. Um, I can tell about myself, definitely. I, I mean, I've been doing it. Yes? Summary of what? Summary of what I was saying. I was just trying to. An <coughs> it was already in a summary. So uh, we were just trying to find out, I mean, how people like the conference and, and what's going on and what's going on over here. So uh, we got one feedback that it's it's the performance has dipped compared to last time. So just trying to find out why. Any more views on 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 whether you liked it, how much you liked it? No views. Like I sone do yar kya kar rahe ho? Sone do yar sone aaye yahan pe kya kar rahe ho? Bug bug kar rahe. It's neutral. I mean, compared to what? Okay. We have already had that discussion. One point of view we have. I'm trying to get to more. Speak up, people. It's a general discussion. Like, it, 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 I'm, I, I was just sitting over there, getting bored. I thought, let's, let's have a discussion. So uh, I, how many people are associated with some sort of Python user group or, or community in their own cities, villages, schools, colleges, companies? OK, one. Two, three, four. Okay. So, you guys, is it your first conference by any chance? How many people have come to a conference for the first time? Okay. PyCon first time. Any sort of like oh, this, this kind of a conference where 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 things are where things are completely managed by volunteers, no corporation involved. Like quite a few hands. So, uh, let me tell you one thing. Like uh, like he said that. I mean, the quality of talks has dipped, right? But what do you expect from a conference when you come to one? Like, what are your expectations when you, when you show up? When, when you showed up yesterday in the morning, what were you expecting from the talk?
talks. Definitely not tutorial talk type talks. What were you expecting from the conference in general? The whole thing. What 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 do you think the conference is all about? Apart, I mean, it's it's talks and it's workshops and uh, it's uh, sponsors for sure. But what else is there in the conference? Sharing experience with whom? The audience. So that's one person sharing his experience with the audience, right? Basically, networking in amongst the Python community. Exactly. Collaborate with people you reach, we meet virtually only. However, like we are a bunch of people who are sitting here trying to sleep while there are 1,000 people out there who are there, who have done, possibly most of them have done amazing things, and we are here trying to get charged up, wasting our time. I mean, I'm not accusing you of anything, but however, that sort of bugs me. Like, I, I mean, we can sit here and we can call that a car conference thief, talks by car thief, but like, what is the effort that we are putting in to make it awesome ourselves? Good, excellent. But th that's the only participant. I mean, I'm like just trying to have a conversation here, guys. I mean, if, if you're too bored, uh, just walk out silently. So uh, just one general request, as in from somebody who's been attending PyCon for a very long time, the best experience is in talking to people. I have related this experience to everyone I, I have met. And trust me, the people I have met, they have helped me not only personally and professionally, and, and in, you know, they've, they have, they've helped me increase my intellectual level, like try, trying to understand and ha help me get out of technical difficulties. And I've made good amount of friends over here. So that is what PyCon is, as far as I'm concerned. And I hope you'll find good people to you know, network with. And uh, I mean, next couple of hours, you won't f spend sitting alone just trying to slack off. Thank you. <laughs>